Now uh, we can see the uh, site of origin and spread of angiofibroma. So I have already told that this angiofibroma, the common site of origin is sphenopalatine foramen. And uh, sphenopalatine foramen usually comes in the uh, deeper attachment of the posterior end of middle turbinate. So in this is the lateral wall of nose, inferior, middle and superior turbinate and sphenopalatine foramen comes here. And uh, this sphenopalatine foramen will be in relation to the maxillary sinus that is on the posterior superior uh, and the medial wall of um, maxillary sinus. Okay. And the confluence of posterior superior and the medial wall of maxillary sinus that comes uh, uh, almost here that is uh, towards the posterior end of middle turbinate, attachment of middle turbinate to the lateral wall. Right? So that too on the upper lip of sphenopalatine foramen. This JNA common site of origin is the upper lip of sphenopalatine foramen. Can also happen BDN canal and also on the pterygoid bridge. So from there it follows the uh, pathway of least resistance. That is the main difference between the spread of JNA and spread of nasopharyngeal malignancy. So malignancy spread by bone erosion most commonly. Whereas this JNA spread through uh, least resistance pathway. Okay, so we will see how it spread. It can spread anteriorly, it can go posteriorly, it can spread medially, it can spread laterally. There also there is intraorbital and intracranial extension. All this you have to study. So anterior, posterior, medial, lateral, uh, intraorbital and intracranial. Okay. So the medial extension is into the nasopharynx. Let us see that. Nasopharynx, posterior end of septum, posterior end of uh, superior turbinate, middle turbinate, inferior turbinate, bilateral both sides. And also 0.5 to uh, 1 cm behind the posterior end of inferior turbinate, there is eustachian opening also. And downward, there is soft free border of soft palate and uvula. This is how the uh, post nasal examination finding. So, from the uh, spinopalatin foramen, it comes somewhere here. And from the spinopalatin foramen, this go medially. So from here it can extend medially, either it can um, expand or it can fill the entire uh, nasopharynx. So that what will happen? There will be bilateral nasal block and also uh, if there is bilateral nasal block, there will be a nasal intonation to voice. That is what we call as uh, rhinolalia closa, close nasal voice. Okay. Along with this, there is nasal block also. This is medial extension. From here it grows medially. Okay. So bilateral nasal block with the rhinolalia closa. Along with that, at this stage, actually, at this stage happens the um, epistaxis start to happen at this stage. And then what will happen? This can grow. From here, this can uh, completely obstruct the nasopharynx and it can cause impinge on the lateral wall. When it uh, uh, compresses the eustachian opening, there is chance of what uh, secretory otitis media. The current attacks of secretory otitis media and also conductive hearing loss. Okay. And then this can press upon the soft palate or it can protrude into the oropharynx. Okay, so either it can cause a bulge on the soft palate or it can uh, protrude into the oropharynx. So all this will happen if it grow medially. Either it can fill the entire nasopharynx leading to bilateral nasal block, rhinolalia clausa. If it press on the lateral wall, eustachian tube opening, secretory otitis media and conductive hearing loss, it can press the soft palate downward 
causing a bulge in the soft palate or it can uh, protrude into the oropharynx or if it grow medially. Okay, this anterior extension it is coming forwards. Okay, so if it comes forwards, anterior rhinoscopy. It is growing anteriorly. So at first there will be unilateral nasal block and also epistaxis. And then it fills the entire nasal cavity. What will happen? This can press on the nasal septum. It will push the nasal septum towards the opposite side. And it will fill further. So that there will be condylateral nasal block also along with epistaxis. Then what will happen? Here is our orbit and the ethmoid sinuses are here. So this will come and grow into the ethmoid sinus. So there will be a flattening of the nasal bridge and also widening of the intercandal distance along with the proptosis. So there is um, Widening of the intercandal distance with the flattening of the nasal bridge and also proptosis will happen. That is called what is the classical frog face deformity. Okay. So, long standing uh, urinal uh, angiofibroma will lead to a frog face deformity. And also this can go and uh, involve the, erode the anterior phase of spinoid sinus and also it can encroach into the spinoid sinus from here. Okay. So if it grows anteriorly, there can be, initially there can be unilateral nasal block with uh, epistaxis. Then it can push the nasal septum towards the opposite side leading to condylateral nasal block and epistaxis. Also involvement of ethmoid sinus. Uh, then flattening of the nasal bridge and also widening of the intercandal distance and proptosis leading to classical frog face deformity. That is anterior uh, spread. Okay. What about the posterior spread? It goes posterior. Directly it can go and erode the uh, spinoid sinus. Isn't it? So first anterior phase of spinoid. Then the entire spinoid sinus can be uh, uh, involved by posterior spread and posterolaterally what is here posterolaterally comes uh, uh, nasopharynx lateral wall of nasopharynx and there comes foursome frozen molar okay and uh, that is well, you know where is this foursome frozen molar that is posterior to the uh, tubal uh, um, elevation comes posterior to the tubal elevation. There is a potential space called fossa of frozen molar. So, posterolateral extension of this uh, JNA can cause involvement of the fossa of frozen molar and this apex of fossa of frozen molar, erotic canal, and also petrous apex. Okay. Fossa frozen molar is actually an inverted funnel shape. So the apex is related to carotid canal and petrous apex. So by eroding these areas, this can go intracranially. Okay, so posteriorly the uh, anterior phase of spinoid sinus, then involvement of the spinoid sinus. Posterolaterally, it can involve the fossa of frozen molar and from there eroding the apex through carotid canal and uh, petrous apex, it can go intracranially. And also, Posteriorly, what is this? Uh, pterygoid process. So, from there, this pterygoid process erosion leading to pterygoid fossa. And pterygoid fossa then involvement with the parapharyngeal space. So, posteriorly, pterygoid process, pterygoid fossa, and also parapharyngeal space. Okay, so. Posterior uh, extension to spinoid sinus, pterygoid process and pterygoid fossa, parapharyngeal space, through fossa of frozen molar, apex erosion, this carotid canal, petrous apex, it can go intracranially.
So lateral extension from sphenobalatine foramen is into the tergobalatine fossa. I have explained the anatomy of tergobalatine fossa in detail in a previous class. Please go through that and study the relations and connections of tergobalatine fossa so that it will be very easy for you to remember the spread of JNA from sphenobalatine foramen laterally into the tergobalatine fossa. Okay, so I will just um, explain that in brief once more. So, axilla, then uh, cut section, orbit. Okay. Anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa, and uh, here uh, there is body of spinoid, then greater wing of spinoid, and also pterygoid process, medial and lateral pterygoid process. Okay, pterygoid plates. Right? So, in between this comes pterygobalatine fossa, isn't it? Please see the anatomy of pterygobalatine fossa, which was taken earlier, right? Inverted pyramid shaped pterygobalatine fossa. So once this pterygobalatine fossa is involved, from there it can go, um, here is posterior wall of maxillary sinus. So this will cause anterior bowing of the posterior wall of maxillary sinus. Anterior bowing of the posterior wall of maxillary sinus by the uh, this angiofibroma and this classical sign is called andral sign or Hallman Miller sign which is seen in radiography. Okay. Andral sign or Hallman Miller sign. Right? This you have to remember usually asked as MCQs. Anterior bowing of the posterior wall of maxillary sinus. Maxilla. Right? And Again, this can go through the inferior orbital fissure. This can go and involve the orbit. So, what all things will happen? If it is involved in the orbit, it can go, it can cause, one is proptosis. This can be pushed anteriorly, outwards. And if it involves the uh, optic nerve, it can lead to blindness. And if it is involving the extraocular muscles, there can be restriction of the mobility of the extraocular muscles leading to diplopia. So along with the spread, we can very well remember the clinical features of angiofibroma also. So once it involves the orbit, all this can happen. And then through the uh, here is foramen lessivum. So through the median uh, canal or pterygoid canal, the involvement of the foramen lessirum can come to foramen lessirum causing intracranial extension. Okay. And also this can uh, erode the anterior face of uh, body and also the greater wing of spinoid and from there we can come to uh, intracranial extension. Also from pterygobalatin fossa through pterygomaxillary fissure, this will go to the uh, infratemporal fossa, leading to fullness of the cheek and also swelling of the face. So all this happen when there is lateral extension from the spinobalatin fossa into the pterygobalatin fossa. Okay, so that is regarding the lateral extension of uh, JNA, lateral extension. Next is intraorbital extension. What is the route of spread into the orbit? The intraorbital uh, extension can be by two ways. One is through the uh, from the spinobalatine foramen lateral spread into the tergobalatine fossa. I already explained through the inferior orbital fissure it can reach into the uh, orbit and also tergobalatine fossa this way and also anterior extension into the nose. From there it can erode the uh, lamina papyracea and then into the orbit. Okay, so these are the two routes by which it enters into the orbit.
one through the pterygoid and fossa, another one anteriorly into the nose. From there, uh, the laterally lamina papyracea and breaching lamina papyracea, it can go into the orbit. Now let us see the spread of uh, juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma from spherical foramen into the cranial cavity. That is pathway of spread to intracranial cavity. So the one is, you know, from spherical foramen. Uh, it goes to pterygoparietal fossa. From there through foramen ovale, it reaches where middle cranial fossa. Okay, so uh, if it is through this route, this uh, JNA will be lateral to internal carotid artery and cavernous cells. Midline, this will be lateral. Okay, lateral to uh, internal carotid artery and cavernous cells. The second uh, pathway is uh, it can go from the geroparotid fossa, it can go to the through the intraorbital fissure, it reaches the orbit that you know, and from in the inside the orbit, this can spread the orbit. Then you can go to the apex of orbit. From there, this will go through the superior orbital fissure. It can again go to the uh, cranial cavity. Okay. So, uh, spinoparietal foramen. From there to the uh, geroparietal fossa. Inferior orbital fissure. Reaching the orbit. Through orbital apex. And from there through superior orbital fissure. We can reach the intracranial cavity. In this case, this uh, JNA will be androlateral to internal carotid artery and lateral to uh, cavernous cells. It's coming through the orbit, it will be androlateral to the internal carotid artery and lateral to cavernous cells. And the third is, you can see it from here. From the geroparietal fossa to median canal, it reaches in the foramen lacerum. And then it can go to uh, medical cranial fossa. Okay. So in this case, encasement of internal carotid artery will occur early. Okay. So to, from spinoparietal fossa by reaching the pterygoparietal fossa, by three routes it can go to the uh, intracranial cavity. Right. And the fourth way, from nasal cavity, here comes spinal uh, sinus. I already told that. So uh, eroding the anterior face and the floor of sphenoid sinus then it is filling the sphenoid cavity and uh, sphenoid sinus and then uh, eroding the roof of sphenoid sinus and going um, intracranially. So eroding the uh, roof of sphenoid sinus and going intracranially. In that case this uh, um, JNA will be medial to internal carotid artery and lateral to the pituitary gland. Medial to the internal carotid artery and lateral to the pituitary gland in this case. The fifth method, fifth route is reaching and going anteriorly uh, into the nose and uh, here is a, a cribriform plate, right? So from the nose, it can uh, go through the cribriform plate, it can reach the anterior cranial fossa. But this is a very rare path for spread. Uh, this channel, I already explained that going posterolaterally into fossa of Rosenmuller and through the apex of fossa of Rosenmuller, there is a petrous apex and carotid canal and then through that it reaches the cranial cavity. So these are the sixth uh, channels or pathway of spread to intracranial cavity. It's important you have to remember this. Okay.